Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Tressa Buckland. I am a Community Experience Associate at Curable. And today I am here with Tariq Clark to talk about his epic journey through chronic pain. Tariq, it is so good to see you. Thanks again for being here. Yeah, much appreciated. Thanks a lot, Tressa, for uh, reaching out to me and uh, having me on. <laughs> yeah, of course. So Tariq, let's jump right in. And could you tell me a little bit about when your symptoms first started and what those symptoms were? All right. So um, the first time I experienced any uh, symptoms as far as like me having like uh, stiff leg muscles and stuff, it was uh, when I was uh, 15, but they kind of came and went, but it wasn't until like uh, 2018 or so, beginning of that, that's when it started becoming more chronic and I actually started needing a cane uh, towards like the middle of the year and I been on it for uh you know years ever since but uh okay. recently gotten off of it yeah well I want to get into that later for sure can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit about when the cane came into your life um what else were you trying around that time to manage your symptoms oh gosh yeah so um Beginning of uh, May uh, 2018, that's when I started, uh, that's when I decided like, uh, I probably should probably get a cane because before then I was like using like my replica like samurai sword tied with the sock <laughs> trying to move around my house. And I'm like, yeah, this doesn't seem safe. I should probably get me a cane from, so I went to Target and I picked <laughs> me up one. And as far as what I was trying, um, just, you know, elimination diets to my best ability, like cutting out like gluten, nightshade, soy, all of that. Um, I remember trying a supplement from a Dr. Stephen Gundry called lectin shield because I thought, you know, dietary lectins were somehow like, you know, causing the pain or something. You know, I might have had like gut permeability. Like, you know, these are mostly just like theories and possibilities I'm trying mostly. And so I did mostly elimination diets to put it short and that's basically mm -hmm. it yeah and when did you realize that the elimination diets weren't necessarily giving you the results you needed well aside from like my uh loss of like what 50 percent of all my muscle <laughs> or whatever and looking like borderline skeleton um i'd have to say um well I think it was around um, November 2019. Well, I did a detox. And after I did that, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm pretty much like, okay, I, if I keep cutting out things, I might as well just starve myself like all together. <laughs> I even tried like the, like a 72 hour fast. So I'm like, okay, if that's not doing anything, then clearly, I guess food isn't the answer. So there has mm -hmm. to be other things. And I really thought about um, the emotional side of it. Like I heard a lot of people talk about it, but I never really considered, you know, the specific uh, scientific connection between how it all worked, you know, and, you know, and I've been in the curable like email list for like a little bit because I found a Facebook ad and that, you know, and it kind of educated me like, I really liked the way it was set up. It was sort of like everything you know about chronic pain is wrong type of thing. And I'm like, Okay, teach me more. I like. I'll, I'll have to learn about the science and all that attitude. Yeah, exactly. So I've been in that firm, and I'm like, why don't I go back in the list and then let me see? Maybe there's something here because I didn't actually get the membership or anything. So, but I guess mm -hmm. we'll get into that. <laughs> so you were originally kind of like a skeptic, like going into it with the "prove me wrong" mentality. Yes. Yes, and. Because I'm, um, I'm pretty sure, like you know, as like you know, and you know, just you know, everybody else in curable maybe, and some of the doctors and neuroscientists and all that. Like, there's a lot of when it comes to like alternative health and all that, there can be some crazy stuff in there. You know, you have some really good people in there who you know read like the scientific literature and all that, but you also have some, you know, some wackos in there. I'm not even gonna, <laughs> not even gonna lie. Like, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, like talk about like putting like mud on the tip of my tongue or something. I'm like, uh, I'm pretty sure it's not <laughs> been studied or anything. But yeah, like I looked into that. I'm like, okay, yeah. And then we all talking about like the role of like the amygdala and like how pain is processed in the brain and all that. I was like, 
you know what? That actually makes a lot of sense. Like, especially when the, I remember uh, hearing like examples of like um, the Phantom Pain examples, how like you could have like a, what's the, 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 the dude, he had like the blade go through his shoe and then they mm -hmm. took it off and the blade went in between his toes and he was in so much pain, but mm -hmm. the blade didn't go on his foot. So he basically fabricated the sensation with his mind alone. And I'm thinking, all right, and somebody who's an amputee can feel pain with a limb that's not even attached. And I'm like, that's fascinating. Okay, there's definitely something here, you know. And obviously, I did more like extensive research on that, but that's its whole other thing I could get into. So, but yeah, <laughs> but yes, I was a skeptic and I looked more into it and I was satisfied with what I found. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're happy you were satisfied with what you found as well. Sometimes I feel like skeptics emerge as the best learners, you know, and the best healers when it comes to curable. Um, if you don't mind me asking, what about this like emotional component to pain really resonated with you? Like, was there anything specific happening in your life that you thought was contributing to your pain? Overall, um... Let's see. I feel like there was a good amount of a lot of things. Um, um, I'd probably have to say, uh, well, it's probably easier if I do this. When one of the first exercises we had, when we had to like list like childhood stressors and, you know, all the way up to like adulthood, um, mm -hmm. I made like very good inventory of uh, some of those things. And I wanted to see if I could find like commonalities between like some of the more like emotionally charged events. And I probably have to say, um, off the top of my head, if I can remember, I boiled, I boiled it down to like two things. I really believe in like 80, 20 rule, like, you know, 80% uh, of the results come from 20% of the input. So I'm thinking like, okay, what's the 20%? So I would say it would have to be feeling judged and uh, not being heard. I feel like those are the two things, uh, the two like big things, like overall, like, you know, being judged and not being heard. And I wanted to see like, okay, where else have I, where in my life have I been seeing this happen? You know, in my childhood and my teens and early adulthood after college, you know, going to live on my own. And yeah, um, that was, that was a huge thing right there. As far as like all the commonalities, if I could just boil it down. Rather, I mean, I could give specific events, but I feel like you're going to need like three hours and a cup of coffee. Yeah. So I won't go into that. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Good for you that you were able to like narrow those two topics down and those two, I guess, stressors, reasons down um, through a writing exercise. You know, a lot of people <laughs> take the curable. <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of people go through Curable and they see the writing exercises and they actually get like a little scared by them. You know, um, could you tell me a little about your experience with the writing exercises? Cause you said it was very yeah, meaningful, you, meaningful to you. Um, what helped you kind of think like, okay, I can maybe tackle this exercise. Yeah, definitely. And, um, I guess to kind of piggyback off my uh, last answer for clarification, it was mm -hmm. actually, I actually had it like pulled up. I had to look it up again because I wrote it down. Mm -hmm. I actually had a uh, feeling judged and feeling trapped. So oh. the, so the feeling like not heard, I guess that goes hand in hand with being judged. Mm -hmm. So feeling trapped and feeling judged was my two, like, uh, like common denominator, common denominators of all of them. So yeah. as far as my experience, um, it was interesting. Um, see, first exercise I did, I can't remember specifically what I wrote. I think I wanted to, um, I can't remember if I wanted to, if I tackled something in my teens in high school or I, I actually, I think I did something maybe when I was an adult, like, like before everything. So yeah, that first experience, like, um, yeah, like, um, I could definitely feel myself like, you know, tensing up and all that. And like, you know, mm -hmm. the, the waterworks definitely did happen, but it was, uh, it was, it was a relief afterwards. I'm like, after I was done, I was like, man, I had no <laughs> idea this was there. And 
what I loved about it is that there was um, with all behind all the emotions, there was some data about myself that was really valuable that I never really considered. I'm like, man, like I really need to talk about myself a lot better than I have in the past. And mm. yeah, and um, it's and it's interesting. Um, I'll, 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 if you would allow me to get into one of the limiting beliefs I came across, but um. This was a little bit before I found a Carable, but I elaborated a bit more in my writing, but I had this limiting belief for a while that I kept repeating myself, I can't focus, like I'm just terrible at focusing, like, and for the longest time I was trying to understand like where that came from. And I kind of, I guess I meditated on it for a little bit and I wrote about it. I'm thinking like, you know what? I didn't create that. That came from a teacher I had in second grade, like, I, you know, and granted, like, I think she was trying to do her best too. I don't want to villainize her, but it seemed like how I was receiving it was like, I could never focus. She's always telling me like, you got to focus, you got to do this and this, you know? And um, it, it just wasn't helping. It's like, you're telling me to, uh, to perform a certain skill without telling me how to do it. And that sort of resonated with me into adulthood. And, you know, a lot of like what I did ended up like not turning out a, uh, the way I wanted it to. And that probably might have contributed to, uh, I know we talk a lot about uh, perfectionism and people pleasing and curable mm -hmm. too. So I think that's one of the big things that contributed to that as well. Like, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I, I can't focus, like, I, like it's gotta be perfect and, you know, perfectionism, so. Yeah, yeah. it's so interesting how some just comments here and there we can internalize them and then they become some of our biggest barriers to not only just like living life to also healing and i think what you said really attests to that yeah definitely um i recently learned from a uh, uh dr joe dispenza he was talking about how kids in like early childhood like their brain waves are mostly like in theta so they're less likely to analyze uh, information they get without judgment so mm -hmm. if you're going in because your analytical mind hasn't formed. So like when you go into adulthood, like that could still stick with you because you've been firing wire in the same circuits ever since you were a kid. So it's natural to you. So right. <laughs> when I when I when I put that together, I was like, oh, <laughs> God, I yeah. have so much uh, to do. So much work up here. <laughs> we learn a lot in childhood, even some things we didn't know that we learned from childhood. For sure. Exactly. Exactly. So, I would love to shift gears now and talk about a recent post you made in the Curable Facebook community about you destroying your cane. And for those of you watching, if you have missed this post or if you are not a member of the Curable Facebook community yet, um, Tariq, could you just tell us a little bit about your thought process behind the physical act of destroying your cane and why this was so meaningful? to your healing. What, aside from being overly dramatic? <laughs> <laughs> hey, it works. Yeah, yeah. So um, the idea of me destroying the cane, it actually uh, came from the dude I just mentioned earlier, Dr. Joe Dispenza, because uh, I've, been, I've been doing his meditations along with the writing, something I wanted the Caribou writing to just experiment with, because mm -hmm. uh, I was really like, and I really like his method of like, you know, um, falling in love with your future and walking into your future, like so you can have like a full like transformation and all that. I'm like, all right, I can dig it, you know. And he's got science to back it up too. So I'm like, all right, <laughs> you got, you showed me the data. And he said this one thing that kind of stuck with me. And he was like, if you like, if you make like a firm decision with like this emotion that's like greater than your pain or your disease or what you have going on inside of you like if you can like if you can make that firm decision then you will have a chemical change within the body which could you know basically contribute to healing even more so so um where destroying the cane uh, came from um it was about the beginning of uh january no not um yeah like like january 7th or so um i decided to just hide my cane in the closet because I was walking around in the house like I didn't need it that much. So I'm like, let me hide it in the closet. Let me not see it because I will neural associate with it if I see it. 
and my, my for some reason my brain will think you know it's a part of you you've been using it for so long so i'm i wanted to experiment so i hid it in my closet and i hid it for about a you know up to like may or so and mm -hmm. part of me was thinking like okay well I, I like i've been doing pretty well without it um i'm feeling a lot more loose why don't i take it a step further and let me just get rid of it all together with that you know with that emotion like behind it too like let me think about like you know this is sort of like a symbol of like um i guess like my shortcomings and like you know i guess like the way i like saw myself in a way like that's just you know that's like like the best way i could put it like the limiting beliefs mm. like um because when i went to sleep i would always take my cane with me into my dreams so and so now this thing is in, is infecting my inner world i'm and sorry so, wait, pardon, pardon my interruption so when you yeah. were dreaming you were not like dreaming like you were running or sprinting you were dreaming that you were walking around with a cane the cane came with me wow. uh, this happened like a couple months after i got on it i'm like oh my god like i'm like i can't have this happen and it's been like that for a couple of years and i'm like okay <laughs> we we need to just get rid of it all together like you know let me go ahead let me let me uh, get rid of it and let me feel the chemical reaction that is happening from my limbic brain into the mm -hmm. rest of my body and let me just remember that moment because, uh, you know, an emotionally charged event, you know, you're more likely to pay attention to it and, not, and create a memory from it. So, mm -hmm. and that memory can, you know, it, it can alter your brain, it can alter your genes for better or worse. In this case, it was better, and I said, you know, "Let's just let her rip, and let's put it on. Let's put it on video too." So, <laughs> let's let it rip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. How mm -hmm. have you been since that? Oh, uh, I've been I've been pretty good. Um, I know I had um, I know uh, last time we talked, I think it was uh like a week or so ago, like um. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember like I was coming off of a little bit of a flare up, but it wasn't like terrible. Um, I recently got back from a trip from Long Island and even though like throughout the terminal, I had to be like pushed in a wheelchair cause I just be limping really slow mm -hmm. and it's very time sensitive. And plus I have a mask, so I'm huffing and puffing even more. So mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. Um, but the times when I could actually move for the most part were actually pretty good. And coming back from that trip on top of me losing the cane, I actually felt, felt, felt a lot better. And actually, when I came down the stairs this morning, I'm like, okay, yeah, we were definitely getting somewhere. I'm, I'm liking this. Let's uh, keep the, 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 this up right now. Let's, let's keep going. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's fantastic to hear. Oh my gosh. Um, mm -hmm. So we're about at the end of our time together but I do have one more question for you. Uh -huh. Since you are making these big like strides towards healing, what are you looking forward to doing um, in the future that you wouldn't have been able to a few years ago? I wouldn't have been able to. Hmm, that's a really good question. Well, the first answer that comes to mind is dance like a fool again. <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's always nice, you know, just I, cause I don't really care. It's like, yeah, feels good. I'm like, okay, let, let me just be me for a little bit. And I'm like, okay, I'm good. You know, yeah. do that. Um, uh, do more like live performances too. I used to uh, perform a lot at college. Uh, I used to uh, rap with a friend of mine mm -hmm. for like talent shows and uh, go to open mics. I love to do that again and ha being able to move around a bit more freely. So mm -hmm. stuff like that um, and hit the gym more consistently because that's what I've really been missing. Like I've really been missing just lifting heavy weights and all of that. So I can't wait to do that again. Cool. And do you feel like you're on a good course to be able to do those things soon? Oh, yeah, definitely. Definitely. This this uh, year is looking really uh, great. Um, and uh, honestly, I'm just blessed. That's an amazing yeah. attitude. My gosh. Yeah, thank you.
I truly wish you all the best in your continued healing. And I hope you get to dance like a fool very soon. <laughs> thank and, you. Yeah, to those of you watching, uh, thank you all so much for being here to cheer on Tariq as he opened up with us today. And if you missed anything from today's session, you can catch this recording on our IGTV and our YouTube channel. Tariq, thank you again so much for being here. Yeah, much appreciated. Thank you, Tressa. Of course.